The angle of a sector of a circle with radius 22 centimeters is 60 degrees. If the sector is folded such that the straight edges coincide, forming a cone, calculate to one decimal place the A radius, B height, and then C volume of the cone. Take pi to be equal to 22 over 7. So we are told that the angle of a sector of radius 22 centimeters is 60 degrees. So we have the angle of sector to be equal to 60 degrees. And then the radius of that sector is equal to 22 centimeters. So in actual sense, we are being told that if we have a sector, okay, let's say this angle is 60, we are told that the length of this sector Okay, the length of this arc. Let's find the length of arc. So length of arc will be equal to the angle theta over 360 times 2 pi r. That will give you the length of this arc. So we shall have 60 degrees over 360 degrees times 2 times 22 over 7 times the radius r. Where our radius is what? 22 centimeters. So let's find the length of arc. So this will go here, we have 6, 2 go here, 1, 2 go here, 3. We have 22 times 22 will give us 484 over 21 centimeters. This is going to give us the length of arc to be equal to 484 over 21. We have 23.047 centimeters. So this is going to give us the length of arc. Now we are told that the length of arc, okay, over here, when we fold it so that these straight edges, which is this radius, coincide to form a cone. Realize that this length of arc is equal to the base, okay, the circular base, the length of the circular base. So we can say that the length of arc is equal to the base of the cone, the base of the cone, okay? And the base of the cone is what? A complete circle which is 2 pi r so we are saying that this length of arc which is 23.047 is equal to the length of an arc is what the length of the whole circle is 2 pi r so this is equal to 2 pi r okay where r is the radius of what the base of the cone okay so finding the radius of the cone we shall have 23.047 equals to 2 times 22 over 7 times the radius r. So we are going to make r the subject and solve for r. So this will be 23.047 times 44 equals to 44. 22 times 22 is 44 over 7 times r. So we have 7 times 23.047 over 44 equals to what? The radius. Okay, so our radius will be equal to when we solve this, we shall have we shall have 3.7 centimeters. So this is going to give us the radius of the cone. Okay, now the second thing we are asked to find is what the height of the cone. So for us to get the height of the cone, if we should draw the right angle triangle in the cone, let's say this is the height, this is the right angle triangle I'm talking about. So we know our slant height L is equal to the slant height, this radius is equal to the slant height L. So that L is equal to 22 centimeters. So we shall have the radius to be equal to 3.7 centimeters. Now we want the height. So we can use Pythagoras theorem. So we have H squared plus R squared is equal to L squared. And our H is what we are finding, H squared plus our R is 3.7 squared is equal to, our L is also 22 squared. So when we solve, we shall get H is equal to, so we shall have 22 squared minus 3.7 squared, which will give us, so we shall have H to be equal to the square root of that, 22 squared minus 3.7 squared. H to be equal to 21.7 centimeters. Okay, this is the height of the cone. And then the last thing we're asked to find is the volume. The volume of the cone 
will be equal to one third pi r squared h, which will be one third times 22 over 7, which is pi. Then our radius is um, 3.7 squared times the height. And the height is given to us by 21.7 centimeters. So this is going to give us, we have 304.4 centimeters cube. So this becomes the volume of the cone. Okay, so with this, we can also consider when we have a force stream. Okay, or a cone whose upper part has been cut off. So let's take for example, I want to give you an example of a force stream. So assuming I have the upper part cut off, okay, we do realize that now, if I'm giving something like this, okay, I've been giving something like this, and I've been giving this as a radius, this as another radius capital R, okay. And then this has capital H, okay? Now, we notice that if I have a force stream, okay, a cone whose upper part has been cut off, what I'm trying to say is something like that, okay? And you have been asked to find the curved surface area of that cone or the curved surface area of this force stream, okay? So what you are going to do is you are going to consider an original cone, okay? We are going to consider an original cone and assuming this is the part that has been cut off so you shall have different radii this radii this radius will be different from this radius okay because they don't have the same length so if you watch the radius over here can be uh, let's say four centimeters this can be eight okay they won't be the same so let's name this small r and then big r okay now what you are going to do is you are going to also consider the original cone, which is capital H. So you consider the original height of the cone to be capital H, and then this one as small h. Or, okay, let's say this one, this is the upper part, okay? So you consider a full cone, okay? A full cone, and then the upper part which has been cut off. So we are going to assume that this is the full cone, and then this is the upper part which has been cut off, which is this part. This part is what I'm drawing here, okay? So this will have the radius r, and then let's say the height, let's say small h. And then the bigger cone will have capital R as the radius, and then capital H has the um, height. So you just do some, uh, let's say, ratio and proportion. You compare them, okay? And when you compare, you can use their radius, this radius and this radius, and this height and this height, or if it is the slant height you have been given. So slant height over slant height over radius over radius or something. Okay? So a force stream is just, um, let's say, a cone, okay, whose upper part has been cut off. And for you to get the curved surface area of this force stream, if you are asked to find the curved surface area of this force stream, it will be the curved surface area of the whole cone. And you find the curved surface area of the whole cone. So I'm going to draw this imaginary line to get a curved surface area of a whole cone minus the upper part which has been cut off. So when you subtract it from the curved surface area of the whole cone, you shall get the curved surface area of this force stream. Okay? The same way if you ask to find the volume, the volume will also be the volume of the whole cone minus the volume of the um, uh, upper part which has been cut off. Okay? It will give you the volume of what? The remainder, which is this force stream. So, so for four students, you just compare and then you ask you answer it. 